What is going on everybody, Cryo here. Today we're taking a look at how I personally like to tank Theater of Pain during Shadowlands first season of Mythic Plus with the prideful affix. Before we begin, I invite you to take a look at my pull by pull mechanics video first. There you can see exactly what each mob of every pack does in greater detail. This video is more about the pulls and the route itself with a few tips and tricks thrown in. So let's get it. These route imports are available for everyone's use and you can find them on my website, link down below. This is another dungeon where the pulls do not have to change up drastically from week to week. There are some minor affix niches, but I do my best to explain them via the MDT notes. The only major differences are dependent on whether or not you can skip the first 4-pack. If your composition allows for it, I highly encourage you to skip the first 4 mobs of this dungeon. On Fortified Weeks, this will cut out a significant chunk of incoming damage, and on Tyrannical Weeks, it's a great feeling to be able to just go right into the first boss with full CDs, trinket procs, and bloodlust or heroism. If your group has a rogue, you can simply shroud past the first three and then distract the Raging Bloodhorn in order to turn its true sight away. Groups can also use a hunter to pull the four pack away with Turtle and Feign Death, allowing other party members to sneak past. Just keep in mind, if you do pull the Bloodhorn, your percentages will be off for the rest of the run and you will not trigger Prideful in planned areas. I suggest following the no skip route instead if your group cannot reliably skip the pack. You will be much better off following a steady route without having to figure out percentages on the fly. Anyways, for the sake of this video, here is my group using the rogue distract method. Again, this allows us to go straight into the boss encounter. Nothing too much to talk about here, most groups seem to deal with this boss pretty easily. I will always suggest defeating Desia first, especially if your group has a soothe of some sort, to negate her fixate ability entirely. The most interesting fun fact about this boss is you can hard CC Zira, the mob that shows up and stuns party members. Hunter traps, imprisons, blinds, etc. All of these will keep her CC'd, meaning you never have to worry about the stun again. After your group drops down, make your way to the Chamber of Conquest or Military Quarter. You will want to pull the first three mobs focusing down the Arbalist. Then you can engage the first Duelist, whichever one it is. While this is happening, it's a good idea for the healer or a ranged player to start making their way towards the second duelist. You do not want to pull it, but you do want to trigger the RP event so that it cuts down some time later on. Once the first duelist is dealt with, head back towards the center room and make your way to the upper barrow of Carnage or Plague Quarter. Now as a Blood Death Knight, I am able to control the first Diseased Horror, allowing my group to focus on interrupting the Blighted Sludge Spewer. The priority of interrupts goes Withering Discharge and then Decaying Filth. While fighting Putrid Butchers, be sure to stun or disorient their Devour Flesh cast. This will heal them based on the damage dealt. And when you finally deal with the Diseased Horrors, be sure to interrupt their Meat Shield. Taking a quick step back, being a Blood Death Knight in this place does have several advantages. For instance, if my healer were exceptionally low on mana here, I would have kept the disease horror under my control. 
this would allow us to drop combat and allow her to regain some mana. Once the group was ready, I could have released the horror and spawned Prideful. Just some food for thought. Spawn Prideful only when everybody is ready. If you have to wait before engaging the pack that would normally spawn Prideful, do so. Better safe than sorry. Be sure to communicate interrupts here. You do not want Withering Discharge to get off, ever. Patience is a virtue, wait for the right time to pass, however, you can shroud or use Invisibot if you are getting impatient. So for this pack, I chose to control the Butcher this time. This means we do need to interrupt the Spewer and the Horror, but we don't have to worry about the tank getting chunked. If your group does not have a Blood or Frost DK, I suggest CCing something or ensuring that DPS has cooldowns ready to pop. This is also another pull that requires some form of coordination. If you must, pull the gas bag alone and then deal with the surprise pack. But if you have CDs ready to go and abilities such as Orsol's Vortex, by all means. We also have our ranged and healer stay as far back as possible or at least 40 yards. You can outrange the gas bag's vile eruption, which removes the hardest part of this pull. If you used Bloodlust or Heroism on the first boss, it should be available again by now and having Prideful plus Lust for this boss feels great. It's not a difficult fight mechanically, but it can seem to drag on which may lead to silly mistakes. You can see here we are using Binding Shot and Ursul's Vortex to help keep the adds semi-grouped up. It's not worth pumping too much damage into them as they will die themselves. Once Gorechop is done, head back to the Chamber of Conquest.
Again, being a blood DK here is a huge advantage. Being able to take the captain out of the fight allows my DPS to unleash their full AoE arsenal on the Arbalest, making quick work of this super deadly pack. If your group does not have this luxury, especially on fortified weeks, you will want to CC the captain and then pull the Arbalest back with LOS. This can get spicy. Again, trigger the RP event early to cut down on a few seconds. Healers, watch out for this mob specifically. If she does this combo of ricocheting blade into a seismic stomp, it will be a lot of damage going out. Just be ready. Hunters and Rogues, you can in fact juke the Ricocheting Blade ability with Feign Death and Vanish. You just have to be very quick with your reaction time. Zaf the Unfallen is pretty self-explanatory. His banner has the highest priority and should not be allowed to exist for too long. Aside from that, communication is key here. DPS should talk to each other as soon as the contenders for the duel are selected. If one player has CDs ready to go for the boss, they should be allowed to win the duel. The opposition should simply turn their back and spam sit. The goal is to get out of this phase as soon as possible since a banner will be up and you do not want to be brought back up and dropped in a bad position with no reaction time to escape the pursuing combo. Tanks should also communicate with your healers, and let them know if you need an external for the brutal combo attack. They shouldn't be needing them on anything else during this fight. Once finished, it's time to head to the Altars of Agony, or Spirit Quarter. Now for this next part, I really only suggest doing this during spiteful weeks. Any other time, simply LOSing near the Necrolord banner is more than sufficient. However, during spiteful weeks, I like to pull the first group of souls back into the main room. If you have a hunter that can misdirect you, great. If not, tell your party to wait and use a speed potion. Either way, gather up the souls, Interrupt what you can, and just before they perish, ensure your group has moved past them. This will allow you to CC the spiteful ads and move on. For the next half of souls, groups will want to make sure that they hang back far enough and let the tank get into position first. If not, it is likely you will get picked off very quickly. Again, LOS to gather up the souls, but start thinking about Spiteful. So here, once I had the souls gathered up, I positioned myself so that I could grip the Spitefuls away from my party members. Working with tight corridors means planning two steps ahead. 
with mass grip and typhoon, there was no issue. For the Portal Guardians, do your healers a favor and stack up close. On Fortified Weeks, these do a tremendous amount of damage. Fun fact, you will need to kill the spiteful mobs before using the portal. Some members may be able to click it if they're not in combat, but some will not and you definitely don't want to split up the party. And you for sure don't want someone going ahead without the tank. One more unorthodox move, for this route to work I do recommend a tiny bit of backtracking. You will see here we go right first, and then back, and then to the left. The only reason we do this is to spawn our prideful before the next portal guardian. Just remember that spiteful still spawns and these are not very large platforms. Sure to interrupt bone spears, they will hurt on fortified weeks. When engaging soul binders, do not let the necrotic bolt volleys get off. With this route, I prefer to go left here and deal with the double death speakers. They do not deal a terrible amount of damage, even on fortified weeks, and all you really have to do is dodge the frontal death win. If your group misclicks or ends up going right, it's not a big deal, you will not skew your percentages and can continue like normal. Cool Thorak is not too difficult with the changes, but it's still not a polished fight. There are also not too many tips or tricks other than pre-AMSing to maybe negate an application of Phantasmal Parasite. When finished, it's time to head back up to the final boss. Remember, there is a raging bloodhorn up there, so it may be wise to let the tank go first. We had trees available, so it wasn't a big deal here. This route is extremely fun to do, and since there is RP up here anyways, why not spend your time spawning a prideful? With the prideful buff here, Mordretha should not pose too much of an issue in the earlier phase.
as a DK, remember to save your Death's Advance for Grasping Rift. I also like to use AMS here to help negate some of the damage going out. Sub 50%, this boss becomes all about positioning. Avoid the Dark Devastation and Ghostly Chargers at all costs. After the second Grasping Rift, there will be no more overlap with Manifest Death, making it significantly easier. So if you can survive past this point, you should have a kill. But that's all I have for this guide. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me, and hopefully you learned something new to take back to your group and make your next Mythic Plus experience a good one. If you are enjoying this content, please do me a huge solid and hit that share button leave a like, and comment down below which dungeon you would like to see next. Again, you can get my imports for MDT on my website, link for that down below. Also, feel free to join my Discord or catch me live on Twitch if you have any specific questions or just want to hang out with some like-minded people. I'm out of here folks, but as always, stay frosty.